Laurel and Hardy are, for me, the classic comedy double act. Their contrasting features always just made me laugh. But I never knew about their late career troubles, troubles which brought them to post-war Britain in the 1950s. That's now the story of Stan and Ollie, a delightful film about showbiz and friendship, starring Steve Coogan and John C. Riley, who embark on a music hall tour that will test their marriages, both to their wives and to their own long-running partnership. The film garnered nominations at the Biffers, the Golden Globes and the BAFTAs, and I'm delighted that the film's director, John S. Baird, joins me and Vera now to tell us how he made it. Congratulations, John, on a lovely film. Thank you very much. Have you always been a fan of Laurel and Hardy? Um, since I was eight years old, you know, I remember watching them uh, on my mum's portable TV after school and just being fascinated by these two clowns. <laughs> so, um, and then I, I, I progressed to me dressing up as Stan Laurel at the school fancy dress party and, and having a, qu quite an obsession with him as a child. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a long running affair, uh, love affair really between me and, 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 and that comic duo, yeah. Well, no wonder you got this gig. I mean, what, what's the enduring appeal of their comedy today? Why make a film about them now? I think uh, th there's a humanity about um, Laurel and Hardy that a lot of comics from that era uh, didn't have so much, you know, I mean, Chaplin, and uh, Buster Keaton, Harold Lloyd were all very, were incredible technical um, comedians. But Laurel and Hardy had this innocence and this humanity that I think was particularly special to them. And it just seems to have stood the test of time. Ready, boys? Quiet, please. We're at West Scene 12, take one. <laughs> feel about the size of the audiences? I've been a little disappointed. I and mean, they said, could you persuade Stan and Ollie to do some publicity in order to turn the tour around? Would there be any more money? <sighs> they said no. Well, who is they? People. The worst kind. When you were casting it, presumably you had to get people that were contrasting physically like Stan and Ollie themselves, but I, I still would never have come up with Steve Coogan uh, and John C. Riley. What did you do to get them together? And how did they get into the roles? We made a list at the beginning of, of all the actors who could play Stan Laurel and who could play um, Oliver Hardy. Um, and then we looked at those actors and, 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 and how strong their comedy timing was or the physical comedy was. So the list got shorter and shorter and shorter. And eventually we got to a place where which Stan out of this list works with which Ollie in this list. And we came up with the fact that Steve Coogan and John C. Reilly would really work together uh, as a parent they were our first choices. We approached them individually. I think Steve was attached maybe a week before John was. I met Steve in London. Uh, I flew to LA to meet John. And then, and funnily enough, the first time I met John in London when he came back was in this very, very bar. Right uh, here. Yeah, that's very bar. We had a few glasses of red wine. John took us slightly more persuading because he was obviously sort of aware there was a big responsibility, as was Steve, but they're both very different people. I mean, he's big, John C. Riley, but he's not as big no, he's not as big as Solomon I mean, Hardy. No, I, I, the first time I met him, I said, are you willing to put on a few hundred pounds for this? And he just said, nope. <laughs> we had to get a big prosthetic fat suit for John. And he actually took four hours every day to get ready for the shoot, um, which was quite a lot of pressure on him. Steve was slightly less. He was about two hours because he had a false chin and, and ears and some teeth and coloured contact lenses. It really made me laugh with the routines during the film, but it's also very touching, this relationship between the two, and I suppose that's ultimately what the film's about. It's about friendship and loyalty. Yeah, it's a love story. Um, that's what the film is, and, and that's why I got the job, I think, because Jeff Pope, who wrote the screenplay, sent it to me and said, you know, um, I'd like you to consider this, which was strange, because my last movie was something called Filth, and it was is very different from, from Stan and Ollie, but he saw something in me, and I went to meet him and I said, he said, what do you think of the script? And I said, well, I think it's a love story. And he said, you've got the job. And it was, as, it was as simple as that, you know. So we built everything around these two men who love each other and, and who have had this great sort of past and a, and a strong relationship with each other. And they just happened to be Laurel and Hardy. That's how we built the, the narrative, really. Here we are, the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> how is Oliver? Mm, he pulling weight. How, how's your knee? It hurts. It's even pushing you a little too hard, mate. No. You could have a long time ago said goodbye, Oliver. That's all in the past. 
You're not oh. still carrying that around, are you? Because I went ahead and did a picture with someone else 16 years ago. You and Harry are just gonna be great together. Mm -hmm. Couldn't sleep for days when they told me what you did. And I couldn't sleep when I did it. You betrayed me. Betrayed our friendship. I loved us. You loved Laurel and Hardy. But you never loved me. People love them as well. They've got some very famous fans that you must have come across when you were touring the film. Yeah, well, I, I know that Mark Hamill, uh, I'm on Luke, Luke Skywalker is a huge uh, Laurel and Hardy fan. Ricky Gervais is a huge Laurel and Hardy fan. Uh, I'm told Jim Carrey is as well. Um, I was lucky enough that, um, that I, I got to know Martin Scorsese uh, quite well over the last few years. And, and he was, he's a big Laurel and Hardy fan as well. And he actually um, introduced quite a few of our screenings uh, when we were promoting the, the film uh, with the Academy voters in New York, uh, which was an incredible experience for myself, you know, to, to, be, to be welcomed on stage by Martin Scorsese. So he's another, he's another big fan. But going back to when you said you loved them uh, as a kid, do you remember the first film, John S. Bed, that you ever saw? Um, well, discounting Laurel and Hardy short films on TV, I think that, I remember the first film I went to see in the local cinema um, was E.T. and was just incredibly sort of amazed by, 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 by what I'd seen and I'm going to do another name drop here because I do love doing that but uh, last year I was at the Governor's Awards which is, a, a, which is an awards ball in LA and I actually bumped into, literally bumped into Steven Spielberg at the taxi rank, yeah? Because uh, he, he was stealing my car but obviously I let it go. Um, and I thought, oh, I've came a long way from Peterhead, you know. So, but no, it had, had a big influence on in me, um, E.T. did. What about a film uh, that you fell in love to? I fell in love to, um, we used to love Dirty Dancing. That soundtrack more than anything else. That was the movie that, even when you hear the songs now, you still get that little tingle, you know, your first love, and you remember it. Um, but that was, that was, yeah, that was the film that I fell in love to, Dirty Dancing, yeah. I have the time of my life. Oh, absolutely. Let's do it here. <laughs> Let's yeah. do it here. I'll lift you up <laughs> where you belong. <laughs> John, it's been absolute pleasure having you on. Thank you so much for talking about Stan and Ollie. People are going to love it on board, I know. Uh, congratulations on that. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Jason.